Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm hope uh, everybody can uh, they are distinct my voices. So I go ahead with my presentation today. Uh, with, uh, the introduction that I've got. So I'm a senior resident uh, in the Department of Psychiatry. Uh, I have done my MD from the Nuns. Currently working as a So, uh, today's presentation on communication skills. So, I'd like to start with a quote that has been a very famous uh, about clinical interview. So, clinical interview is virtually an indispensable uh, tool for the physician patient interaction. Well constructed interview truly may be regarded as the most powerful, sensitive, and versatile instrument available to the physician. This quote was given by uh, George Lipman Angel, an American internist and uh, psychiatrist. He was best known for his formulation for the biopsychosocial model, uh, a general theory on the illness of, uh, for illness and healing. So with this uh, quote, I would like to summarize uh, what would be the uh, proceedings of today's presentation. So it would be first, what is communication and what are its types? And what type we are going to uh, uh, specifically uh, discuss today? terms, definitions and examples that you need to know before we go ahead to the core presentation. How important communication skill is for a clinician and ways of communication, uh, the process of interview and the factors that influence the uh, rapport building which on which the whole presentation is being built up, barriers for effective communication and what are the do's and don'ts followed by summary and clarifications. You might stop in between for uh, clarifications as well and we can take up questions and uh, further discussions. So what is communication? Yeah, as we all know, it's a dynamic process which involves uh, conveying a thought or a feeling. How it is uh, received depends upon the set of events, stimuli that the receiver is exposed to, and how you say and what you say plays an important role in communication. So types, what we usually have broadly, uh, we can put it as verbal, of which you can put it as oral and written. In oral, you have speaking and listening, and written, you have writing and reading. Whereas non-verbal, you have facial expressions, gestures, body languages, proximity that you maintain with the person, touch, personal appearance, and silence. Of all these things, we will be discussing mostly about the oral uh, aspect of it and the non-verbal aspect of communication. So, before going into the core uh, features, we will be discussing few of these uh, terms on and off. So, it is better that all of us are in the same page. So, what do you mean by rapo? Rapport is nothing but an harmonious responsiveness between the doctor and the patient. So the patient should understand that the doctor is trustworthy and he can even be able to share all the information with the doctor. And the doctor also feels the same way that yes, the patient is confident in me and I can go ahead in uh, giving my recommendations to the patient. Empathy, it is the capacity to appreciate and understand the experience of the patient, which is usually achieved when the doctor imagines himself in the patient's position. but Warning is that, but maintain objectivity at the same time. So if you lose this objectivity, then it becomes sympathy. That's where we lose efficacy as a physician to maintain that position uh, contact. Next is paraphrasing, which is a restatement of a text or, or a passage, giving the meaning in a, another form. I will be giving the examples in the coming slides. What about reflecting? It's about emphasizing by talking this back the same crucial point which was told by the patients. So reflecting it back to the patient is called reflection. Listening versus active listening. Listening is hearing uh, grossly what has been said, whereas active listening is a dynamic process that includes both hearing uh, what has been said and simultaneously processing and interpreting the words that are spoken or even not spoken also to understand the complete message that has been delivered to the receiver. So to put in colloquial terms, if you are married, you are if you are listening, you are an husband, and if you are if your wife, you are actively listening. Okay, then coming on to the uh, open-ended versus closed-ended questions. Open-ended questions require the patient to answer with more or less uh, simple yes or no, uh, whereas closed-ended, sorry, uh, open-ended questions require the patient to answer more than a simple yes or no question, whereas closed-ended questions generally limit the patient to respond in an yes or no dichotomous uh, way. Whereas leading questions, that leads the patient to provide a response that he or she will perceive to be the answer that the interviewer actually wants to perceive. So, now the next slides will be more of examples. I want 
if uh, people are interested, I want them to just point out what, what are the uh, examples actually point, uh, relevant, uh, relevant. So the first example is, I know just how you're feeling. Uh, my grandfather had cancer and it was a shock to all of us. At first, he was just overwhelmed and upset. So this was the uh, statement that the doctor has told to the patient when the patient was describing that he has been diagnosed with cancer. What does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, can anyone respond for this? Uh, the statement that uh, Dr. Rakesh read out right now, uh, what does it uh, depicts or what does it about? You want to choose from one of these, what could it be? Anyone? Okay. Uh, okay. It could be a, a, a way of empathizing with the patient, but the next sentence, if you see that, uh, again, the doctor is telling that, I know from some personal experience that finding out about cancer can be overwhelming. How are you feeling? So this is another way of empathizing to the patient. So there are two ways of empathizing to the patient. The second one seems more direct so that the patient might not feel that the doctor is actually trying to, uh, you know, uh, trying to normalize the next one would be, so you have an excruciating pain, what else? So you have an excruciating pain, what does that mean? So when a patient says to you, I keep having uh, pain all day. So the doctor responds to him saying that you have excru excruciating pain. That means that it's, it's a kind of a reflection where the patient says that he has pain. The doctor is trying to reflect the same point in his words, making the patient understand that he has got the point. Then, uh, how are you feeling today? This is the doctor's query to the patient. Is this, what kind of a question is this? I want you to uh, pick from either if it's an open-ended or a closed-ended question. So it's more of an open-ended question that the person has, how are you feeling today? Rather, if you can see the next sentence, it's more of, how are you feeling well today? That's more of a yes or no question, so it becomes a closed-ended where you cannot talk more than an S or no, whereas how are you feeling today? Well, the patient can explain that he is not feeling well because of this, that. So it will be more elaborate manner. You don't, do not miss any doses of your medication, do you? So this is an example for you, for a leading question, where the, you are actually closing on the uh, open question so that you get a specific reply from the patient. Next, coming on to how important is a good uh, interview or a communication skill. So it influences your professional relationship with your patient, how strong it is with your patient, helps evoke vital history and thereby effective diagnosis, indicates the patient's trust on your treatment and thereby uh, adherence. It improves willingness to revisit you. So these are the important points why there should be a good communication skill. As we all colloquially know that having a good communication skill with patients forms a trust. So it will improve their satisfaction in treatment and with the notion of sharing private and sensitive de details, especially in terms of mental illness, anxiety always prevails among these patients, and providing a comfortable and safe environment by the doctor is very essential. So basically, it helps you form a healthy uh, rapport with the patient. So with this in mind, uh, in the past, it has been in 1997, the MCI uh, regulations have actually had ma mandate to teach communication skills. Communication skills. However, uh, that was also continued uh, by the mission uh, 2015 document of the MCI, but it was not uniformly followed across the country. So with this, the MCI always felt that communication skills is always important and they are expected to communicate, or the doctors are expected to communicate appropriately with their patients, the family, the colleagues, as well as the community. So with another quote, uh, before going into the uh, core uh, uh, discussions, Maya Angelou is a um, uh, well-renowned American poet and a civil uh, rights activist who was, uh, was a, uh, basically a black who had uh, recited a poem for the first time uh, during a uh, presidential uh, 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 signing in, that is uh, Bill Clinton's uh, dream. So she says that, I have learned that people will forget what you have said. They will forget what 
you did, but they will never forget how we made them feel. So that's how important communication skills are, which is not only about what you talk, but the way you talk, how you, the body language is about. So ways of communication, um, especially when it comes to uh, talking with the patient. So th there have been uh, certain uh, models which have been uh, used in the past. Uh, so of, of which the most commonly uh, seen and described is are the friendly and affiliative versus business-like and dominant kind of communication, patient-centered versus disease or disorder-centered, directive versus sharing uh, consulting type. If you see the friendly versus uh, business-like, uh, it's like when you're friendly, it's like the, the patients feel that you're polite and respected, respectful, considerate, social and jovial at times with positive, normal gestures and encouraging and empathy. Whereas business-like, it will be more of tension and tone, a lot of anger and disagreements during the uh, discussion of the recommendations. Antagonistic to all the points put forward by the patient and uh, they get a vibe of irritation all the time. So patient-centered will be more of a semi-structured, open-ended uh, question uh, clustered interview and patient is allowed to express and from that expression the relevant information for the diagnosis is out by active listening and followed by uh, leading and uh, closed-ended questions as and when required. Whereas a disease center will be more of a structured Low standard history taking uh, where you use a lot of screeners, schedules and performers. Patient is more of a passive respondent with more or less an yes or no kind of a, or short phrases. And uh, the directive versus sharing is more of, I'm giving some examples for directive versus sharing. So when a person comes to you, uh, usually these are the uh, response that we give as a physician say that this is a serious problem, you should have come earlier, have come late. It's more of a directive kind of an expression, whereas in sharing it would be like, what do you think this has, why do you think this has happened? And what made you consult at this point in time? The other example is you are suffering from uh, a particular disease, whereas you ask the patient, what do you think this is probably because of, what do you think that is wrong with you? It is essential to take tablets is more of directive, whereas what have you tried to do to help yourself in the past? like to have a prescription, I recommend meds will help you in this case. This is more of a sharing kind of an experience with the patients. Come and see me after a particular duration of time is more of directive, whereas when you do like to come and see me again and then once the patient gives a particular timeline, you can always say that I would feel that you can come after use. That could be more of a sharing kind of a, uh, discussion. So any queries till now, we can take up some uh, yeah. Uh, any queries, any inputs uh, till the, uh, regarding the presentation or the material that has been covered till, the, till this point uh, from uh, anyone from the audience? See, till now he has presented the uh, basic things, terminologies he has explained and everything and he has given examples uh, whenever it is required and uh, to, to tell uh, regarding communication skill is, it is uh, the uh, point like communication skill is the one thing that, uh, that that is in between a good diagnosis and a probable not so good diagnosis because the information you get from the good communication skill is always a, a asset for a physician. I guess uh, most of you, most of you people agree regarding this. I mentioned about all the uh, nuances of uh, 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 clinical interviews, and also he has given an example. Uh, kindly, anyone has any queries or uh, any inputs? It is always welcome. I think in the last session, we had some discussion about the violence against doctors. I think one of the way to avoid it is to have a better communication skills. I think last time also, uh, the team uh, uh, had discussed it that a better communication skill, both verbal and non-verbal, will have some indicators. Like it would be most of a step will be a precaution step, help to avoid the violence against doctors. So knowing this would be really useful. Any clarifications or any points for discussion?
no further clarification uh, can continue with the further presentation so another quote uh, to go uh, further when you talk 7% out words they are only labels and the listener puts his own interpretation to the speaker's words 28% are paralinguistics the way in which something is said and the bulk of 55% is body language what a speaker looks looks like when he is conversing so with that i would like to you know uh, give a brief outline of the most commonly used uh, model for uh, interviewing a patient which is the patient centered interviewing so it contains around five with which you can actually uh, interview a patient so i'll be just giving a gist of it of course this pattern will come only when as and when you uh, practice it with your patients so it's been a practice that you know, for physicians that it's it's always been a close ended kind of an interview where we always have a set of questions to ask for especially in very uh, you know busy schedule or busy opd setting but it's worthwhile trying out the uh, open ended uh, patient centered questioning where even when we started with this perform a kind of a questioning it tend to have taken time in the beginning as and when we uh, used it very frequently while practice it has the time would have come down so patient center could also be of a similar sort so the first step will be of to setting the stage for the interview so as when the patient come walks into your uh, cabin you welcome the patient you can use the name uh, so that they get more uh, so that's the most uh, you know uh, soothing sound for any person to hear this name from a stranger introduce yourself and identify specific role but if your name board is already there and is is already there on the table or on outside your uh, cabin i don't think in a busy schedule it would be uh, you know recommended for introducing yourself for every patient ensure the patient is ready for your uh, interview and privacy as well then remove the whatever barriers that you have like probably if the door is open you can have a lot of inter interruptions so try to keep the barriers to minimum i'll be talking about the barriers to communication in the coming steps ensure that the patient is comfortable and put them at ease both physically as well as with your words the next step will be to elicit the chief complaints as well as setting the agenda that's when the patient comes in you set the agenda by indicating them that see we have this is scheduled so this is the time that will be allotting you say we have got about 20 minutes today together so let's see what you want so what is the next question could be what is the reason for your visit and uh, if it's it can be just if it's a new patient then probably you should start with the chief complaints and if not you can see that you can uh, review the blood test or something like that so you talk to them what you're going to do by setting the agenda in the beginning and obtain all the list of all the issues the patient wants to discuss at that particular point in time after you got all the information you can summarize and finalize the agenda and if at all you feel that you will not be able to completely finish it you can still say that you know before we before starting only you can still uh, you can say that you know before we go ahead with the agenda let's get a list of the things that you want to do discuss today the rest can be taken up in the coming uh, visits then that's how you negotiate the specifics there are too many agendas that is put on the uh, items step 3 will be to help the patient uh, to express so as we already mentioned about open ended questions once you has the chief complaints next uh, thing is to express uh, to identify what what are to elaborate the chief complaints so for example if that going to be in headache you just ask them okay tell me something about your headache that you have been having so once they completely uh, give their uh, overview about their headache then start you can in the meantime use all your uh, non focusing open ended skills like silently listening to the uh, <laughs> <laughs> by using your uh, non focusing open ended skills by listening silently active listening using neutral utterances like we mm, hope okay, and something like that using non verbal encouragements uh, and also in the meantime to obtain additional data from non verbal uh, sources like patient's non verbal cues their characteristics as well as environment that could be uh, patient status how they are reacting to the uh, patient's complaints so all these things will make you understand the patient as a whole while you are actually going to find out the diagnosis the next step would be to elicit the physical symptoms you can uh, the patient is telling that probably i have been having this pain for a long time 
So you could use the uh, um, more techniques that we have been discussing before that uh, about paraphrasing, reflecting. So when you use all these skills, the patient will come to know that you are actively listening to them and you are not deviating from any of their uh, worries that you are talking about. And once you try to reflect by telling their holes, so you have been having an excruciating new pain, then what else do you have? So if you keep telling all these things, then they will feel more comfortable talk talking to you. And that is one of the uh, skills that you have to have. And later, once you got all the information, you can summarize by telling, for example, if the patient has come up with fever, you can say that, okay, first you had fever for these many days, and two days later you started having uh, knee pain, then you began to hurt, and yesterday you had begun to limp, started limping. So this is the phrase, uh, so, uh, this is the whole issue that you have got. And I'm trying to check with the patient whether you have understood it right. So all these things will put the patient under ease that the doctor, yeah, he's been listening to you and he has understood it right. If you want further information, then you can just say that, you know, say more about that. Say more about something. What else is happening? So uh, the next point would be to elicit personal psychosocial context. This is especially for, you know, psychiatrists or the mental health professionals. So you can still go ahead and ask how this has affected your family, affected you in terms of uh, your functioning. What do you think might be going on? So these are the other questions that put them and you can continue building your app. And of course, this again is more of for the uh, mental health professional point of view where you elicit emotions. So not when I say mental health point of view, it doesn't mean it's only for them. I'm just putting if it's going to be a very you know uh, busy setup, probably these questions could be avoided. So you can ask them how are you doing uh, with this problem? Does it make you feel better? And other questions would be, you know, you have been having uh, disabled by this knee pain. I feel that you're feeling, I understand that you're feeling uh, uh, you know, disturbed because of this way. So you can respect them telling that this has been a difficult time for you. Show a lot of courage. So all these statements will put them at ease and they feel that, you know, the doctor is becoming understanding and he's, so there is a, a kind of a respect, self, a mutual respect that's being formed. Okay, and later you say that, you know, so I shall help you on this regard and we shall uh, go ahead and give you the recommendations. So this is for each symptom that you would try to do. And if you want, they have a few more complaints or concerns, you repeat the same cycle again for each. So the last one, once you get all the history, then you have to be more of using, as I told you previously, uh, patient-centered part is over. Sometimes you need to quickly wrap up, so you need to suddenly shift gears and put and go into the doctor center phase where you can just ask quick questions, close standard questions like a brief summary and checking the accuracy of information, telling them that I'll be asking you a few questions, uh, tuck, 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 so you can just give me a, in a yes or no question or something. So for example, um, if you ask, want to ask something about vomiting, you have uh, the vomit yellow in color or, uh, or did you have any uh, projectile vomiting? Those kind of questions, if you, if you have not covered in the open-ended uh, part, you can just ask quickly uh, all the close-ended questions so that uh, the whole you know, uh, interview is complete. So next, this is the most important uh, aspect. So what exactly has been the friction between the patient and the uh, doctor? Why is sometimes the interview doesn't work? One thing you have to understand is that you know, there's no ideal uh, way of uh, finds his own way of uh, communication uh, or interviewing style. But there are few factors which actually will influence your rapport building when you are interviewing the patient. So that will be the respective personalities that each patient, uh, the patient or the doctor will share. So when those two comes in contact, of course there will be certain uh, you know, uh, life experiences and cultural values that each of them have. So that might be a barrier, uh, you know, when, especially when there are a uh, doctor from a different culture or a language background tends to uh, interview a patient from the other side. That could be certain inhibitions or hesitancies for the patient to open up. So it's the skill that a uh, physician should have to put the uh, patient as he's at ease so that he gives us the information. So when I say cultural competence of the physician, it's the flexibility that the physician will ha uh, should have to interview patients across different cultures. So if we have uh, certain surveys that have shown that uh, the patient's uh, characteristics and the doctor's characteristics which have been favorable for patient satisfaction. Uh, for example, female uh, patients, older patients, and language compatible doctors, uh, the patients have uh, told that they have felt more comfortable with doctors. 
and uh, patients who have been electively admitted have felt that uh, they have been more comfortable with the care system. Lower hospital bills, good hygiene in the hospital. These are the other social uh, parameters that have felt that the rapport building was good or the patient satisfaction was good in these aspects. Whereas the patients felt that when it was an older physician uh, and it was especially when it comes to uh, specific specialities, obstetrician and surgeons uh, seem to have more uh, built more rapport than the, their counterparts. Uh, the debate is that since in, uh, in gynecology, since it's for uh, childbirth, eventually the uh, you know the parents feel happier, so the uh, satisfaction is more. Whereas for surgeons, it seems that since patients feel that whenever they have to be operated, it seems that it's it's, it's a huge problem. So when they get operated successfully, they feel that the doctor has done a good job for them. So they feel more you know uh, cordial with their doctors. And uh, and in, in addition to all these things. Any physician was being very concerning, actively listening to them, carefully listening, listening to what they say, explaining difficult concepts in a minimal medical jargons, in simple language, spending more time with the patients. These are the other parameters which have put the, put the patients at ease and uh, they have complained of, uh, uh, told of good satisfaction. However, uh, to warn you is that uh, the disease outcome is not directly proportional to the pa patient satisfaction, but this statement, however, is has been having variable uh, you know, research uh, outcomes. So how to improve a patient satisfaction from at this point in time, just in case. So communicating preoperatively in patients who have been uh, for uh, surgery, calling few in in, uh, fewer inpatient consultation during a prolonged hospital stay, exhibiting uh, provider empathy in a clinical setting and explaining a medical condition and treatment and ensuring reliable follow-up communication targeted interventions such as, such as edu education about the medical problem and the illness and real time feedback to, re to patient satisfaction. So for a person uh, who is listening, it's been put that there are four levels where a person actually listens to. The one would be a completely uh, non-listener who doesn't listen to anything. One could be a marginal listener. The other one could be an evaluative listener who's uh, just picking up the crucial points that is required, the other one, the last one would be the active listener, which will be the ideal concept that we are talking about. So to improve the listening skills, when you start talking to a patient over the table, it's better not to be preoccupied. You should have a mindset that once you're a doctor, you're being demand something from you, which is, I think, a part of your profession. So keeping everything aside, Start being, uh, you know, at, at the present, not being preoccupied with whatever is behind. Being open-minded and non-defensive. Say if you don't know any, anything, be open to them. Being sometimes defensive will also put you that, okay, if I'm not clear of what they're asking, sometimes we are, tend to get irritable and be more, start becoming defensive. Minimizing interruptions, this is more important. So sometimes when we are doing an interview, we have your, you know, hospital assistant or someone coming in. It's very important, as I told you, to keep your cabin very, you know, uh, barrier uh, uh, effective so, so that nobody comes in. And sometimes, you know, uh, it is very difficult to avoid those. You might have your superiors coming in. So that time is very important, you know, tell the patient, uh, you know, uh, politely that can you just wait for a few minutes and just uh, speak to this person for, uh, for this many, much time and just get back to you. Is that okay? So these are all the few uh, nuances that you have to understand when you are interview. So effective listening is more of hearing it clearly, hear, interpreting whenever it's necessary and understanding the message and relating to what you want to do is, is that is to come into the right place. And whenever you're not clear, be open to ask questions to the patient so that you understand it. Barriers to effective communication it could be some unwillingness, unwillingness from the communicator, like patient might be unwilling to say something in a different manner. So sometimes when you feel that I don't understand, can you put it in different words? The patient might have difficulty in saying things in different ways. That could be one barrier. The reason for that could be probably a lower uh, socioeconomic or education background. Unwillingness to relate to others differently. Sometimes they will also have certain issues that if, if a person is not able to understand them properly, find it difficult to see that, okay, this person is not able to understand this point. Maybe I either I have to tell it in a different way or to stop explaining it. Unwillingness to learn new approaches. This could be either with the patient or even sometimes for ourselves with the colleagues also. 
uh, lack of self confidence lack of self awareness that sometimes going back and having feedbacks about uh, asking about feedbacks from your colleagues how has been my interview taking videos or recording uh, how you are you know uh, interviewing a particular patient all these things are very important uh, in this aspect lack of enthusiasm some, sometimes when you completely become drained out especially in emergency or sometimes you, you tend to feel you know exhausted so those are the barriers for sometimes for effective communication and so those are all going to be there and from the receiver's end could be uh, you know the personal values as i already told they can have their own set cultural uh, uh, values and beliefs so anything that has been top beyond that they might feel that this doctor is probably might not understand me at all so probably he might stop telling few things to us so being very uh, aware of all those things and accepting that each you know uh, uh, community or uh, culture values different and it's important for that patient is very you know very very significant for the decision to follow selective perception similar like when they feel that you know uh, they keep uh, they get fixed or become rigid to a particular uh, concept they have difficulty in getting out of it that again can be explained because of uh, poor you uh, know uh, intelligence or education background of course knowledge of the subject and the other two i've already what are the external barriers that we have the venue itself could be an external barrier we've been talking about this uh, emergency setup even in the clinic how difficult it can be in ma managing patients uh, icu setup whereas in the ip it could be a better when compared to the op and the ic emergency noise levels at the venue it's very important to uh, you know keep uh, you know uh, all the set place that basically demand, uh, depends upon the at the administrative level uh, how you you know is your interview room uh, how uh, isolated it is from the waiting hall all these things comes into it this is one thing that was interesting temperature and time where the climate could uh, you know waiting time if it going to increase and is the temperature or, or the climate is going to be really bad patients can become restless and it could also influence the way they respond to you and uh, coming to the last few slides uh, what are the essentials of communication so as i already told your mindset before starting the interview matters a lot we have uh, been trained uh, or told that you know as doctors care is the most important and uh, before prescription whole pr process itself involves care so it's always important to keep the mindset as calm as possible always think ahead about what you're going to say so it, this will come only when you have seen a lot of patients and you know what you're going to say it's simple words and phrases that will be mostly understood by a lay person so don't use medical jargon you have to be ready enough to you know uh, practice or simplify how we are going to uh, you know uh, simplify the medical jargon just into sentences of small phrases which a lay person can understand sometimes that can uh, you know indirectly influence the way the patient understand it and it may lead to violence again your knowledge on the subject if you feel that you're not you know com uh, confident enough and sometimes not being confident itself might put you in a place where you are very you know becoming uh, you know irritable and might not be able to answer in the right way you might feel the anger on yourself which you will display on uh, patient or their relatives what do you speak speak clearly and audibly start speaking slowly and you know if the patient doesn't understand it will eventually go back and waste your time they might ask you again back and explain it again which will eventually let us know check twice whether the listener uh, whether they have understood you accurately or not you don't have to even check twice if they have understood you can ask them to even you know uh, could you tell me what you have understood so they can just tell what they have understood uh, so that you feel that okay or both of you other dose will be in case of interruption as i already told if somebody you know uh, come in between and we have to take a break once you receive the interview it's good it's an habit is a good habit that you just say that okay till now uh, sorry that i have uh, have interrupted in between till now what i have understood is this thing can we go ahead so little re recap would help and always pay an undivided attention uh, to the speaker by this don't you know try to uh, you know uh, keep little here and there which might annoy the patient also uh, and sometimes if you have difficulty in following it take notes of important points as well as we do in the setup sometimes you write the chief you know chief complaints that could be uh, important as well 
So if you are failing to grasp, definitely go back and ask for the clarifications. So what are the don'ts? Uh, do not instantly react and mutter something in anger. Just wait for a second, try to analyze what the patient has told, then try to keep a you know, calm and uh, I know it's difficult in the moment, but it's important to practice at a point in time when you see the things. Do not, as I told, do not use technical terms. Make sure that you are able to break up into a smaller and simple uh, layman uh, terms to use. Try not to speak fast or slow, which could be uh, counterproductive. Make sure your voice is distinct. Do not speak, try to speak in an inaudible uh, surrounding. It's again going to be counterproductive. Do not assume that whatever you have told the patient has understood and uh, they are continuing to ask the same thing again and again. But you also have to, as I told you before, change your approach in making them understand. So, paraphrasing at this point in time is very important. Try to put it in different words. These are the skills I think as a patient you need to work, work on. So while listening, as I told you, do not glance here and there. That might distract the speaker as well and what you want to say might not be uh, content on. Do not interrupt the speaker. You have to be clear enough when to interrupt and then you give your response. Do not try to jump to the conclusion. For example, few uh, doctors will also feel that once a patient comes up with a complaint, you, you, you jump to a conclusion saying, okay, this is going to be the diagnosis or something. Try to make sure that they complete what they have uh, want to say. Maybe from there you can also ask leading questions so that you understand the So, uh, to summarize, interviewing is an art and there's no perfect interviewing. Striving for per perfection by a constant practice. Each patient will provide better results every time. It's a vital tool for, tool for any physician, just like uh, a surgeon's life. You can hurt yourself or the patient if not used skillfully. Important to understand the difference between empathy and sympathy. Uh, so you don't have to feel that you know understanding the patient is not our uh, part. It's only prescribing medications. Not that way. Empathize, but sympathy is not required. Listening is as important as responding. And patient-centered seems time-consuming, but practice just like how how you spend time in the conventional institute. The previous uh, in, while you start uh, practicing this time. This too will come down and be more effective when compared to the conventional history taking pattern. Maintain calmness and understand what's in your control and try to you know, make uh, take necessary precautions. So to end with, the profession demands care and the word means a lot more before penning down the prescription. So it starts from what you speak and till the point you put a full stop to your prescription. Thank you.